Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. So, Mr. Magazine, the other day, I went to the estate sale of the century. The last one. The last estate sale of the century. So, I've got nothing to do for the next uh, 76 years. So, maybe I'll list some of my back stock. Um, and while I was there, I talked to a fellow reseller. Um, and we were talking for a little bit, and he wasn't aware of the uh, channel, so like and subscribe. And uh, so we watched a few of the episodes, and we were talking a little bit about it. And I asked him, because he started about the same time that I did. He started on eBay in 2003. I started in 1998, but I really started selling on my own in 2002. So we essentially started about the yeah. same time. I know that he does it full-time, so he goes around to all the estate sales and all that. So he's... Mm -hmm. He probably does more sourcing than I do because he does it week after week to, to you know, two, three, four estate sales, drives on to Buffalo, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Um, he doesn't do the flea markets, I don't believe, but he does He does more sourcing than I do. We're about the same amount at, at the very least as far as venues gone to. Yeah. So I asked him, I said, hey, look, I said, I'm not trying to pry. I just am curious. What is your unlisted, your dead stock, your dead piles, how many items? And I wish I hadn't told you before, Mr. Magazine, because you're going to get it right. But how many do you think he said? I'm going to guess hundreds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I do listen sometimes. Once in a while. Um, yeah, he has hundreds of items of, in his dead pile. I've got more. I've got probably fifty to 75,000 items. Now, I don't know how much money I spend versus him. That I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dig that deep into it. You know, it, that's... A little beyond what I would, would normally ask, mm -hmm. um, but I said, "Wow!" I said, "I'm kind of envious." Can you imagine if I had 200 items unlisted? <laughs> exactly. Well, the money you would have because of all the stuff listed, and then the room you would have for the stuff that's already sold and gone out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. And he said, "Oh, he goes, I'm jealous of you. I wish I had that num that back stock to be able to list." And I laughed and I said. Wait till I go go out somewhere and talk to Mrs. Paper going. I'm sure it can all be yours yeah, exactly. <laughs> if the price is right. Yeah. Um, Let's start with the garage. Exactly. <laughs> You'll never notice it. Take a couple of boxes out. Um, but, yeah, so it is kind of interesting how two sellers who sell basically the same type things could have such different results. Yeah. Any thoughts about that, Mr. Magazine? Uh, I would think um, one definitely would be you would have more connections, obviously. You know, I would think you do, and you should have more connections, meaning you you got a guy in California mailing you stuff. You got this guy you see at the fleas every week. He's got three boxes for you. You got this guy, this guy, that guy. So that's where you have your edge. You know, he may go to more estate sales and church sales or garage sales or whatever, but you definitely have them there, and those are the deals that, you know, make what you have, you know, so successful because you have, you know, we mock about – all the boxes here, but it's because you have those big deals. Because I have those big deals, and we have something to fall back on. So, I would it would be great if we had nothing left. But then we'd be nervous wrecks. Like, well, what are we going to do next week? If we don't buy something. What if there's a drought? Right. What if there's a COVID or something, and we can't buy or whatever? You know. So I'm, you know, it's, it's nice that we have it. You know, if it went away, we probably would be rich. But, you know, <laughs> right, it's a, right. It's not. It's not a perfect world, but. Uh, you definitely have way more connections that you've met over the years that the, is the reason, the difference between you two. Well, and there's got to be a happy medium. Somewhere between, and, and again, I don't know how many, say 100, say 400 items for him and 75,000 items for me. <laughs> there's got to be a happy medium in between those two numbers. That's the right amount of back stock to have yeah. at the size of our stores. So question, how many listings does he have on average week after week compared to you? If he's, you guys have been doing it at the same time. Amount of right, time. right. His overall listings are going to be roughly 5000 I'd say, and I got 22000 on eBay. As yeah. far as I know, I don't believe he sells elsewhere. Um, I've got 22000 on Amazon and, you know, 800 on Etsy and blah, 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 yeah, blah, so blah. So you got like 50000 he's got 5000 So you're 10 times him listed, and you're 1,000 times him, you know, with back stock. Now, part of that could be, um, the fact that he was doing this full time while I had the day job, that could definitely be a part of it um, because he definitely lists and sells eh, 50 to 75 to 100 items every single week. Um, whereas there were times when I had the day job that I was listing you know, 25 items in a week, 30 items in a week. If it was a really, really busy week. Um, so that kind of 
allows the back stock to build up. Now, granted, you got to buy a lot more also for yeah. it to, to back up. But if I remember, he prices stuff pretty reasonably, so he's at a higher success rate yes. of sales. So, you know, if he's listed, if he has 5000 in his store, he may have had 50000 over 10 years or whatever, and he sells a higher 80% rate because he's selling stuff for 5 to $10, where you're selling your stuff for 15 to $30. Right, right. Yeah, no, he definitely, he definitely has a lot faster turnover as well. Um, which there's absolutely something to be said for. No doubt at all about that. Um, trust me, I wish I could turn over quite a bit of the stuff that I have sitting around here. Um, that would be nice. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but it was kind of interesting, like I said, to, to ask him and to get into that and, and to talk to him about it because, again, I had no idea at all what the answer was going to be. Mm. And I was, I was truly curious about that uh, because there's another person that we know whose prices make mine look like I'm absolutely giving every single item away. <laughs> And he literally has a um, basically a tractor trailer full of stuff, at least one on his property, mm-hmm. and along with outbuildings and a barn and, 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 and. He probably has more stuff. He, he probably has double the amount of unlisted inventory that I have. But only um, sells a fraction. Right, fraction. exactly, exactly. He only puts high-end stuff on and, you know, he doesn't list a lot of stuff either. Right, well, I think I'm beginning to see a pattern. You list... You list items at ten dollars, and you have very little back stock, and you sell a lot of it. You list items at thirty dollars, your back stock builds, and you don't sell that much. You sell things at three hundred dollars, you sell almost nothing, and your back stock goes completely out of control. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Hmm. Price things well, cheap, well, yeah. and you move it. Who would have thunk that? Yeah. What do you What are you going to choose behind which door? Exactly. Well, unfortunately, I've chosen door number two, and I think I got the booby prize. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, hit the like button if you could. Kind of interesting conversation there. Hopefully, uh, you can you can add something down below, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.